We're on Daf Yud Gimel Amud Beis, about one third of the way down from the top. Omar Rabbi Abba, the first word in the line is the lesson. And now we're going to study the sugya of Yodos, which means something that is attached to an Ochel, and the Ochel was Makabal Tumum, or you have a Kli, and something's attached to the Kli, a handle. And that's called Yodos, and that has a din of Tumo, it's, it's Makabal Tumo, together with the Ocha. The Omer Rabbi Abba Omer Avuno, we started this yesterday, Abotzer Legas. So now he's got a wine press, and he is pressing his grapes to produce yain. Now, with regard to grapes, you have the covering over the grapes. And those really don't add anything to them. On the contrary, they detract because he wants to get the wine. He doesn't want the outer covering of the grapes. Now, the outer covering of the grapes would normally be considered Yodos, and it would be Makabal Tumah together with the grape itself. In this case, as you're crushing it together with the wine. But in this case, Ainlo Yodos. And the reason for this is because although Yodos is part of the Ikar, however, based on a sugya in Chul and Dafkit Ches, the status of something that's attached to let's call it a stem is that of Yodos, and the tuma would be conveyed from the Yad to the Ochel, or vice versa. However, in a case where he doesn't want the Yad, the stems detract because they are not meant to be mixed together with the wine that he removes from the grapes. And basically these stems will be a negative. It will detract from the quality of the grapes. He doesn't want it to serve as, uh, as a handle, you know, in this case, he wants to really just be rid of it. Now, in Hebrew, he calls it givolim. And enala givolim din yodos lekabolas ulahavoras tumo, in both directions. He doesn't need these givolim, these stems, to be attached to the grapes. It's not going to, in any way, enhance his creation of yayin, his production of wine, which is what he's that's what he's interested in doing. Adarab, lo noach, lo with an alf, lo noach, lo for him. In effect, these give olim will absorb some of the wine. Whom I've seen him also, he loses that quantity of wine. Lo nemar din yodos be ofen chain of kefits kafits for him. And in a case where he doesn't want the yad, then it loses its did its status as a yad. And to read it in the original formulation, he writes, in his barer, the enlo chayfetz, he doesn't have any need or desire, the chibura, pokeh mehem shem yodos. And he could be mafkir the shem yodos. And we're assuming that machshav alone is sufficient to be mafkir yodos. The whole sugi is going to deal with this later on, but right now that's our assumption. Later, the Gemara is going to try to prove the Anita Maisa to remove the status of something that's already been established as being a tool. So we have here now the presentation of the opinion of Rabbi Abba, according to which, since he doesn't want the the give olin that surround the grape, 
On the contrary, they are moths in him. Therefore, it's not yodos. And it doesn't have the status of yodos. Because of this negative repercussion or impact of the yad. Rabbi Nashim ben Gada Omar Afuna. Here we have another statement, but this time it's Rabbi Nashim. And we're going to have a case where he doesn't want the yad, but it's not because the yad in any way detracts or causes him a loss. And that's the case of Hakotzer. Hakotzer means he's harvesting grain. Listen, he wants to use the cut grain on the top of his sukkah schach. He has no interest in eating the kernels that he's cutting in this particular case. Ain't no yodos. Once again, the same three words that we saw in Rabbi Abba, ain't no yodos. And that means that there's no din of yad on that husk that surrounds the tour. And we'll call it, although I'm not sure if this is the exact precise translation of what we need here, but we'll call it the straw. And there's no Kabbalah's tumor, it doesn't convey tumor because the person doesn't want the kernels. He wants the straw. Now, the reason he doesn't want the kernels is because he wants schach. And kernels are edible, and therefore they come under the category of a Dabra Makabal tumor, which is invalid for stock. So his interest now is to separate the straw, which he uses stock, from the kernel. So he no, no longer wants that chibu. He's not interested in that connection between the straw and the kernel. And therefore the straw is no longer functioning as a handle or a protection for the kernel. He wants to separate. And therefore these uh, shall we say, stro this straw, which is part of the stalk itself, that loses its status of yah. And the Gemara now analyzes, is there enough community between Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Nash? Is there a machloka speech? Mandi Omar. Oh, sorry. Mandi Omar, according to Rabbi Nasha, now we have a Kalafon. If Hotzer, when he harvests the stalks of grains, the kernels of grains, for the purpose of Scott, there's no din of yad on the straw that's attached to the kernel. Is Kloshkin Botzer, the lonely in the case of Botzer, which is the case where he was harvesting his grapes for the purpose of crushing and removing the wine, the grape, the grape juice from the grapes, where the connection between the outside of the grapes and the grapes itself was disturbing. The low nimtse lecham, because it would suck up some of the wine and detract from the value of wine that he wants to drink at home or market. So therefore, in this case of boats air, for sure he doesn't, he doesn't want that attachment of the outside of, of the grapes. Let's just see if we can find a word for it. Um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, he called it. 
he called it the stem. I'm not exactly sure if I'm comfortable with the word stem, but in any way, straw stem, these are the these are different cases and the, the terminology that we're using. But let's go the other way around. Matthew, we're going to have the Abba Boter. In the case of Boter, which was the case of Rabbi Abba, about which Rabbi Abba says, in lo yodos, that's because he certainly doesn't want the chibur between the straw and the kernel, because that, as we said before, detracts from, from the wine. But Kotzeb, as far as the case of Sach is concerned, you know what? It's not so terrible if the straw is still attached to the kernel. And why is that? The Nifale de Lissach, who Kiechitlo lived Libadra. That in a case where there still remains a connection between, between the straw, which is the lower part of the stalk, and the kernels, the kernels themselves are beneficial to him on the top of his sukkah. Now that's a little bit paradoxical because the straw is a puzzle is but first, let's understand why he could theoretically benefit from the kernels of grains on the top of his sukkah. The Gemara says, the lowly And perhaps it means that the kernels add a certain weight to the straw so that they won't fly in all directions. It'll sort of weigh down the straw. But now we get to that second question. Why in the world would he want the kernels of grains which are edible and are invalid as stock to be put up on his sukkah. And we're going to have to add another element, as Rashi explains, a row that the kernels are mute and the straw is the row, and therefore the kernels are but the row. So there's no problem of so stock over here. The question is whether it's a yad and the answer is that according to Rabbi Abba, it still retains its status as a yacht. He does have vested interest in the continued connection between the straw and the kernel, insofar as it weighs down his schach, which is a good thing. And on the negative side, it doesn't pass the schach because it's mute. So the Gavar says, we assume, based on the following rights, that Rabbi Menashe is dependent upon Emachlokas Tanoi. We're going to soon see that Rabbi Abba for sure is going to depend on, can only make sense going to one of these two cheetahs in the rights. But what about Rabbi Menashe? Tanya, we learned in a rights. Soche te'enim, which he translates as anfe atse te'enim. We have it simply as branches which have things attached to them. Or, right, bohem ubohem te'enim. So again, keep in mind that te'enim itself, the pre, is posos ak, the anaf is kosher. Akilim, which are called zmoros, Vines. And there are still grapes attached to them. Passion, which we translated as straw. And they're still attached to the grains. Machbedos or Machbedos, which are literally translated as brooms of palm trees. And there are dates still attached to them. Kulon, with regard to all of them, this is the sheet of the Tanakhava the Bryce. We'll see another sheet of soon. Im solus brubalochlung shere, the imla psula. Everything depends upon the psolus, 
which is, shall we call it the refuse or the waste product that is not necessary, if that is greater than the ochl, so let's say you have enough, enough fib, sorry, enough fib, barubim ala payros, then it's kosher for stock. Now what's important here is that when you're calculating rove and mu, you don't have to introduce or include in the calculation the yodos, meaning chelke anaf hasmuchin lepri. So that part of the branch that's close to the pri, with, with, which is meshamish, it serves to grab onto the pri as a yad, that doesn't have to be included in the calculation because the yados themselves are cheres l'schat. So therefore, we're going to need only a rove in the anuffin against the peros. We're not going to include the others in love. If, on the other hand, the peros are greater, they are the majority, then the schach is schach. Here Omrin, you kashin merubin we're going to calculate the yodos together with the ochr in order to set up rov and mi, meaning that the status of the yodos is that like the ochr, they are slos v'scha. My love, for hoko mitzvah, we assume the machlok is here, recorded this price between Tanakama and the acherim, is the following. Mar sovar, according to the acherim, Yeshlem Yodos. Then in the case of Otzer Lizcha, the Yodayim remain Yodayim. They are Yodos. And that reflects the sheet of Rabbi Abba. Because as we said before, the Ochel is beneficial to the Yad, weighing down the Schach. And therefore, the Chibur, the connection between the Yad and the Ochel, is something that he's, to some extent, in favor of. He benefits from it. Umar Sarah, according to Tanakhama, Aim Lahem Yod means that's reflective of the Shita Rabbanasya that the Yodayim, the status of Yodayim does not apply to the, to the stem of the kernel for the sake of stock. He, he wants only pure culture stock. He's not interested in the kernels or Ochlin. To uh, weigh down the stock. That doesn't really register on his rectus. He makes the following observation I had no question about Rabbi Abba. And he certainly will have to assume that he accepts the sheet of a that there's no a difference here in the status of the stem. The stem remains, remains as we said before, you're dying. Okay. And we, again, I, I get mixed up sometimes between straw and, and, uh, and stem. Let, let's call it straw. Let's talk about kernels of So therefore, Yuchrach, we have no choice but to assume that Rabbi Abba reflects the shita of the Acher, that there's no that, that that there's no change, basically, and the status of Yadayim still, Yodo still is retained. But according to the Chacham, Tanakhari in Christ, who hold that the the uh, straw has <clears throat> has no din of your dying because he doesn't really want the khibur, the connection between the straw and the kernel of wheat. It loses its status of your dying. That certainly is against Rabbi Abba because we made it clear that according to Rabbi Abba, in the case of Kotzer, Kotzer Lushach, 
then it still retains its status as a yacht. Right? That's what we said before. Mandi Omar Potzer. Ain lo yodos. Avon Kotzer, meaning Kotz and Scott. Yes lo yod. And here the Rabbanon is saying that it doesn't have the status of Yad. The Rabbanasha, our Gado, mi lemo tanoi. Are we forced? Is, for that matter, is Rabbanasha forced against the corner? Mi lemo tanoi. To assume that he has to accept, adopt the position of the Rabbanon in this right, so that there's no din of Yad to the straw. Or is it possible somehow? To reconcile Rabbi, Rabbi Menach, Menashe, even with the sheet of Acherim, Amulcha Rabbi Menashe. This is not, my position is not dependent upon a machlok, because Kuli Alma Safi, everybody agrees, even the Acherim, that if he cuts down the kernels for the purpose of there's no yodos. He doesn't really want the kernels on the top of his schach. And therefore, he doesn't want the chibur, and it doesn't have a din of yah. What is the case in this price? His original intention, when he cut down the kernel, was the purpose of eating. Then later, Nimlach, he changes his mind on the end so once he did the pizza and he harvested these kernels for the purpose of eating, then at that point, the chaskis, so he had a din of yados, right? Because now the straw serves as a handle for the kernels. But since he changed his mind and he decided, you know what, he's not going to use these kernels for Achilu, but rather he wants to redesignate and reassign them for schach. Then here's the machlokis between the Tanakamo and Achirim. Is it mafkir the din yodos? Achirim say that the status of yodos remains the same and they are possible for schach. Because they're Makabal too. And the Rabbanon say no, that we change the status of the straw once he decides he wants to use the schach and he's not interested in the chibur. The Gemara asks, e hilo, my time in the, the only way that you could explain and justify the Rabbanon now, in the case where it definitely, the straw definitely at one point in time had the status of Yodos at the Chas, when its intention was. You can have to assume that it's mafkia the shame yodov. The chit heima kasavi rabbanon kevi the nimlach alem. Once he changes his mind, the sifuch he wants to use for schach. But ole machshavta misono. His original intention for achil is completely gone, and therefore now the way he reassigns it, he's mafkia the shame yodos, and now it's a separate entity. He doesn't want the chibur to the kernels. He wants it as a separate entity, and therefore. It's not a yacht. So the Gemara says, Is it sufficient that he changed his mind to be mafkia the shame tuma in yodos? But tonight we have a mission in the 25th parak of Caleb. Hola, Caleb. And here we're turning to Dafi and Dalit. But the ain't only bituma asan el bichini maisa. In other words, it's true that a kli could be susceptible to tuma. It's makabel, shame kli, and therefore it's makabel tuma. But machshav alone, like for example, let's say he has hides or with an iron, and he wants to make it into a table, and all he needs is a very limited amount of ibu of tanning, and he can basically leave it as it is now. If he decides to make it into shoes, then he has to cut it with a certain meticulous measurement and then start sewing it together as a shoe. Now, if he 
has decided that, you know, for his purposes, he doesn't have such great, he's not a shoemaker, great aspirations. He just wants it as a shulchan. Even if you tell me that your general R, which is very expensive, leather you know, is designated for minal live for shoes, make a lot more money than just say, sell, selling it as a table. You wouldn't use such expensive material for a table. But nevertheless, it's enough for his machshava that he decides he wants to use it as a shulchan, and that generates a shame clean as But once you have a clean, like let's say, for example, in that case that we gave, you have the R, and he initially thought he's going to designate it as a shulchan. So now it becomes a clean. And Yardalem Toras Kabbalah's Tumma, it's now susceptible to Tumma. Now he changes his mind and decides, you know what? I want, I want to make it strips of leather for shoes. I'm going to cut it down. Again, yeah, if he had thought initially that that's what he was going to use for, if he hadn't thought that he was going to designate as a table, then it would not be the Kabbalah Tumma at this stage because it's not yet a clear until he makes a shoe out of it. But here in a case where he initially Designating and deciding once it's shulchan, it's now has a Torah's kli, it's makabal to Now you want to change it? Oh, for that, Sarah Lasos Shiri Maisa. He has to do an action in the R. He has to take the, the R and let's say Yinat's bar is He has to already start cutting it, making it into strips, into ritzuos. And Maisa. So the thought that now he wants to redesignate instead of for Shulchan from Minolim, that's not going to be able to mafkia his original mice. And it remains in the state of a Kli and it's Makabal to me. You can't remove that state unless you really change it with a Shinu mice. So now if we apply that logic to our case, how can you tell me that according to Rabbi Nashi the Brisa, in the case of Katzat's Tvua, his initial in, in decision was for the sake of Achila. And then he changed his mind and he wants to use a Chesichu and the Rabbanon hold the Eilam Yad, it doesn't have a status of Yodos. What do you mean? It was already Chal as a Yad. The minute he had the decision, it designated for Achila because Yardulay to Machshava. And if it's Yardulay to Machshava, now you need to cheat your mice. It's not enough to say, oh, I changed my mind. I want to use it for Sarah. Eat him. And if you'll say, Hani Mili Kalim, that Mishnah is addressing the case of Kalim, the Hashiva. They have a certain Hashivas. Avo, but in our case, Yodos. We're not talking about a Torah's Kli, we're talking about an Ocha, which has a less of a significance than a Kli. We might argue that Machshova, Nasa, Machshova, Soka. It was his original Machshova, the Shem Achila, that brought the Shem of all his Tumor. And now his Machshova is known, not for Achila, but for Sichu, that's going to remove the Shem Tumor. And that's why the Rabbanon here in this price are whole. His machshava, when he changed his mind and now wants to rededicate it, re uh, dedicate it for schach, that's mafkia, the shame of ochel. And kotzitz mitchil l'sivuch, even the acherim might agree that there's no din of yad, like Rabbi Nashi argues. So the Gemara says, no. That distinction does not make sense for Atanan. We have a mission at the beginning of the set of Uktir, kol yodos ha'ochlin, for example, cash, which is connected to shibole tfuot. So you have a straw that's connected to the kernels of grains. And we said that unless proven otherwise, it's guilty, meaning we assume that as a din of yad, the besasan bagorin, he crushed them in the threshing uh, floor and he want, doesn't want to use them as yadavs. Again, the Gemara is going to go into a whole discussion soon what the Sasan means. But let's just, for simplicity's sake, we'll say he crushed them. Oh, they no longer are maybe a Satumala Ochla. No, it's Besisa crushing them. It's Mavato the Torah's Yodos. And Rabbi Yossi is Mitame. He disagrees. 
So the Gemara says the following. There is one man who says that what does Bissasa mean? They were bound together and he, on, he loosens the binding. So now we have a chiluk, we have a distinction between Kalim liyados, and that makes sense according to this man, the armor, we'll see that's Rabbi Lazar, who understood that Bissasan means he tears a kesher, so omre at fuam and asle dusha. We see clearly that he doesn't need this chibur of the cash to shibolim, he starts crushing. The she, the cash. So the shame yad on the cash was because he wanted the cash to be a handle for the tvua and connected to the tvua. But now he does a, a very light kind of action, relatively, of hiter iguda, which is still begetter machshava, and that's enough to be mavat the shame yad. So now we can say that even the price above. In the case of Katron, Lachilo, Vedim Lachalim, Lusicho, that could already be Mafkia, the Shem Yah. And the Rabbanan hold that in such case, Bitlo Lu Machshava, Alide Machshavta, Bitlo Din Yodos. El Amanti Omar, but according to Rabbi Yochanan, who says, My Bissosom, what does it mean, Bissosom Mamish? Is a real crushing, a dish of the tfuo, or maybe introduce the animals, and the animal does dish. Now he's really physically weakening the connection between the kernels of wheat and the straw, and he's caught, making it impossible to lick Shara You know, to consider that the kashim are still somehow connected to the kernel as, as, as a catch. So now we have a clear-cut proof that he doesn't want this chibur of shibolam and kashe, and he's mafkia there for the status of a yad in the Torah's Kabbalah's Dumo. But that's only Disha, the Maisa Gomu, complete action. Is Michael a Mamer? How, how you can explain the logic of the Rabbonum in the case where he was cut as a shibolam lachibu and then nimlachalim? Where's the radical change in the Maisa that, that we more answers, Hokanami. Here too, in the price of the Chachamim, Shabbosos on Mamish, which means Dosham Beragli Abeim. And in that case, the Chachamim say that the cash does not have a din of Yad and it's kosher Lescha. Again, assuming it's in the, minor, in the majority. Because he does the ma'isa besos on mamish to be mafkia toras kavos tuma from the yad, even though initially his intention was in the in the harvesting the ketzitzah was the shem achilu. God says he hafi my tamayu da'cherim. How you can understand the achirim when you say that this still retains its shem yad when we saw already in the mishnah that any yad. Of Ochlin, if you do a mice, it's mafkir the chain yad. He did a mice of besosan. The Rance is the Omic Rab Yosi. We can align the sheet of the Acherim with that of Rab Yosi, who said that he disagrees in that Mishnah with the Chacham. This Nan, in the case of Kola Yodot, so Ochlin, Chabbasasan, Begorin, Tahoros, Rab Yosi, and Talmud. Rab Yosi holds that even after the Besisa, there still has. They, it still retains this, the din of yados, and therefore it's a conveyor, a conduit of tum. So according to Yochanan, who says that Pesisa means Disha, the more radical Maisa, he holds like Rabbi Yossi, that even this Pu'ula is not Mavatul the Torah's yados. So the more he asks, I don't understand, hi, ma. How, how do we understand, you know, this equation between Rabbi Yossi and Acherim? 
in the Mishnah with regard to Basisa, and the Tfua is in the Gorin, it's on the threshing floor, he did not yet do an Akira. That even if he does, as Rabbi Yochanan has the Sasan Disha, it's not Mavato the Din Yados. And why is that? Here the Gemara introduces a, an observation, a comment <coughs> of Rabbi Chimel. It's Roy. As a yad, look at Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. This is with a pitchfork. The Amar of Shimon ben Lakish, Hoel Uruyas Lahovchan, the Esar. Esar is like a pitchfork. So, pitchfork, of course, has wide teeth, the space between the teeth. And if he's going to use this pitchfork into the kernels, the kernels will fall between the cracks. It won't be meaningful. But if it's mixed in with the kashim, even though the kashim were crushed already, He's going to be able to dig his pitchfork in and pick up the shibol. And in that sense, he gains something in the connection between the crushed kashin and the shibol. But in case of the price, where initially he wanted the tua for achiba, now he changes it and he wants to use it for schar. He's not. Interested in, you know, turning it over with a pitchfork, after he crushes these kashim, what are these kashim uh, roy? What do they function? And when it says, actually he's going to want to take off his schach. And the kashim now are serving as yodos when he takes apart his because at that point, he can hold on to the kashim, which are longer, and he can grab onto them easily. And he doesn't have to go one by one picking out the shibolim when he takes apart his sukkah. Gufa, going back to the Mishnah of Kol Yodos Ha'ofim Shem Sasan, Begorin Torahs of Yotzi Benani, Mai Bissasan, Rabbi Yochanan Bissasan Mamish, and Rabbi Lazar Omer, Hitir Agdan. As we saw earlier, this is the machlokes between Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yochanan how to interpret Bissasan. According to Rabbi Yochanan, Bissasan means he crushed them. Maybe he used, as we said before, the, the animal the legs of the animal crushed them. And Rabbi Lazar Omer, he dragged on he just simply took the kesha, the omrim of these stalks of tua, and he untied it. So there was a bundle, and he untied the bundle, loosened the top. Mishlam the Rebbe Lozo of Yom Pesosan, that means Hitler, Agadon. Then Hainu de Metami Rabbi Yossi. We understand very well the reasoning of Rabbi Yossi, that he retains the status of Yodos, because according to Rabbi Yossi, this action, which is lightweight, it's a Misa Kolb, Halush means light. It's not enough to be mafkia the shame ya. You need a maise gom. But elder of Yochanan, according to Yochanan, who says besosa man, which means dicha, that's a maise gom, is a maime tamir of Yossi. Our Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, as we saw earlier, hol uruyas la hofchan be'eser. Because now, after he finishes this dicha, he still wants the, the crushed uh, straw to be mixed up together with the kernels so that now, he can use his pitchfork and turn it over, transfer, you know, and transfer from place to place. And the Gemara ends with an agadic statement on Rabbi Lazar, Loma Nimshalat Tfilosan Sadikim Ke Eser, right, with regard to the Tfil of Yitzchak, that he wanted Zerah, he wanted children. It says, Vayetar Yitzchak Lashem, Lenocha Kishto, Yakarahi, Vayer Oser Lo Asher. Vayetar, which is a conjugated verb, the noun, the shorish of which is an eter, which is a people. Why is the tefillah of Yitzhak, of a very successful prayer of Yitzhak, compared to a pitchfork? Lo malcha to teach you, ma eser zeh ma hapech sa tefua ba goren, 
mimakom lemakom, to the pitchfork, you turn over the tzvur in the threshing floor, and you bring it from one place to the other. After he lost and shot tzaddikim, ma'afeches daito shal kodesh baruch hu mivias atzorius lemidas rachmanus. It also turns over something. The tefillah of a tzaddik will turn over the midas hakas or the midas azorios if, if there's divine wrath against the sinner and transforms it into midas rachmanus to compassion. The Marcha explains that just like an atar, an eter actually, is hofe. Ultimately, the goal, the agenda, the, at the end of the day, at the end of the tunnel of the use of the pitchfork to separate between the straw and the kernel. And now he quotes. A safer from the Minchas, the Lazar, the Mukacha Rebbe, called Divrei Torah, Shebe Eter Zorim Esatvur. That we use the pitchfork as a preliminary stage for the actual planting. And the Rishonim ask Akasha, how can you pray for a Chola or for any Tzara if it's Gazra Chakosu Yisvara? This was the will of God. God decreed that a person should be sick or that a person should be poor. How could he pray? What's the license to pray and change the will of God? And the answer is, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Atzmo, Chafetz, Beripu Yachol, Vechilotza Ani Me'ani. God's real interest here at the end of the day is to therapeutically heal the sick or to remove the destitute from that state. Now Hashem wants that feeling. God really ultimately wants to end and terminate this state of, of Tsar and Cholik. And so the mail he says, now I understand the marshal to the Tfila Sadikim of the Eter of the pitchfork. Shabba Eter, Maber Satu Mimokal Moko, Valulim Ashotim Litos Zeritson, La Vira Lamokum Shane. He's not really interested in transporting the kernels of wheat. When he puts it at a different place, that's only so that the wind will come by and blow away the straw. I'll prove it to you, he says. After he finishes the winnowing process, he's going to bring back the kernels to the original place, the location. Bitsaroso, God doesn't want him to remain in his misery. Adrab on the country, he's following Yom Aklibo, Yetzebimenu, he should get himself out of that state of misery. Yasalim Komo Rishon, God wants him back in the original place. This leads us to face Daf Yom Ishir, the Mishnah, here on Daf Yudalid Omen. Thank you very much.